inside the terrific FedEx Forum, a so far very disappointing looking crowd. Much smaller than it is life and death. In the last year, he's come from incredibly difficult and trying circumstances to become maybe the most talked about fighter in the sport. Let's take a look. Imagine living alone on these streets. You are nine years old. Edison Miranda is a niño que creció en la calle de Colombia. Dios me puso en mi vida el boxeo y eso es lo que estoy haciendo, aprovechándolo al máximo. Abandoned at birth by a 14-year-old mother, unequipped for the responsibility, Edison Miranda began his forbidding hard luck journey. Hay una señora que se llama María Juliana y ahí me crié con ella hasta los ocho años y medio, nueve años, y después salí a caminar solo. A reunion with his mother never far from his mind. Edison escaped his surrogates and set out to find the woman who might have a change of heart. Traté de buscar a mi mamá y me metí atrás de los camiones. Y así, donde el, donde el camión fuera, donde fuera, no tenía rumbo donde fuera, y esa ciudad yo llegaba. Alone and hungry, nine-year-old Edison Miranda traveled some of the world's most dangerous areas in search of his mother. He eventually found her in Buenaventura. In a young life already filled with disappointment, this encounter would be no different. Mucho adiós y la conseguí, pero no se dieron las cosas porque mi papá había muerto y ella tiene otro esposo. Entonces su esposo no me aceptaba en su familia. Pues ese fue el día en que decidí salir. This second rejection left him heartbroken and fighting for survival. Siempre estaba pensando cómo conseguir el pan del día de mañana. Tengo un niño y dormía en la calle todo ese tiempo. Y me buscaba cartón y los ponía y dormía ahí. He was living and sleeping wherever he could, you know, find a place, eating anything he find on the side of the street. It was hell. En una época en Barranquilla que estábamos muy mal de dinero, no teníamos dinero y cazábamos los gatos y los matábamos y nos comíamos los gatos. It was here in Barranquilla, 500 miles from his mother's doorstep, where Edison Miranda's life would change forever. Había un drogadito y él me dijo que yo tenía que aprender a leer y a escribir. Y después me enseñó las abecedarios, lo aprendí todas, y ahí aprendí a leer, a escribir, a sumar, a restar y a multiplicar. A rudimentary education was not the only door that opened for the street-weary teenager. Una noche soñé que estaba en algo como un cuadrilátero, un ring, que tenía muchas cuerdas, y yo estaba con alguien peleando. Edison Miranda, el muchacho vino con mucha hambre. El muchacho vino aquí con unos zapatos rotos, una camisa corta, mocha, blanca y un pantaloncito mocho. Dormía en el ring y hay muchos mosquitos y todos los mosquitos en la noche se alimentaban de mi sangre y la verdad es que era una tortura eso para mí. Today Miranda is a long way from that mosquito infested gym. The most talked about up and coming fighter in the sport finally has a place to call home. Just over a year ago, he relocated to Puerto Rico where he also found the parental figure he's always craved in trainer Jose Bonilla. Jose has really been that father he never had. And before the fight, he, he lives with him, he eats with him, he talks to him, and they have so much more of a relationship other than the trainer boxer. Solamente no me ayudaba en la parte boxística. También me ayudaba a ser, a educarme como, como persona, como comportarme. We have the same, same, uh, uh, Feelings, you know, about the, the faith, the way he grew up, his childhood, tough, uh, tough life. This guy is special, you know. Edison Miranda goes confidently in the direction of his dream. The battles he fought in his life just to eat and, and survive, to him, it's, it's an easy day when he steps in the ring with anybody. And he now lives a life no one on the streets of Colombia could ever have imagined for him. Against Kelly Pavlik, and you'll see the one-year age advantage for Pavlik, but they're both just coming into their primes. A three-inch height advantage for Pavlik, who at 6'2 is very tall for the middleweight division, but an arm length advantage, conversely, of an inch and a half for Miranda, measured from the armpit to the end of the fist. They both weighed in at the official division limit of 160. Miranda rehydrating overnight to 173, two pounds heavier than Pavlik, 171, according to our unofficial HBO scale.
Rules of the bout from our unofficial ringside scorer, Harold Letterman. The Edison Miranda Kelly Pavlik fight is scheduled for 12 rounds using the unified rules that you see on your screen. Jim, real quick, the four criteria that the judges will use to score each individual round clean punching, effective aggressiveness, ring generalship, and defense with a strong emphasis on clean, effective punching. Jim! Ladies and gentlemen, before we get started, for this great night of boxing on HBO World Championship Boxing. At this time, we must pause to pay honor to a member of the boxing fraternity who tragically and suddenly was taken from us in a traffic accident just days ago. He will forever be remembered for his courage and KO power, and his legacy will always include his big heart, equaled only by his big smile. At this time, ladies and gentlemen, please remain silent. As the timekeeper tolls a memorial count of ten for a fallen hero, three-time world champion, Diego Chico Corrales. Rest in peace, Chico. And now, uh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to FedEx Forum Memphis, Tennessee, where tonight, DeBella Entertainment is proud to present an evening of world-class professional boxing for your entertainment. All bouts sanctioned by the Tennessee Boxing Commission, Commissioner Meredith Sullivan. This first bout is a presentation of Seminole Warriors Boxing top rank and main events in association with DeBella Entertainment. At ringside, the three judges scoring this contest on the 10-point system are Richard de Caffarel, Mauro de Fori, and Ken Morita, and inside the ring, your referee in charge of the action, Steve Smoger. And now, ladies and gentlemen, on the line, the WBC number one ranking 12 rounds of boxing in the middleweight division. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing the color copper and weighing in officially at 160 pounds. His professional record, a perfect one. 30 bouts, 30 victories, including 27 KOs from Youngstown, Ohio, the undefeated. WBC number one right middleweight contender in the world, Kelly the Ghost Pavlin. And his opponent across the ring fighting out of the red corner, wearing black with red, official weight 160 pounds. Professional record, 29 bouts. 28 victories, including 24 knockouts, with only one defeat. From Buenaventura, Colombia, the WBC number two ranked middleweight contender in the world, Edison Pantera Miranda. Centering, gentlemen. Gentlemen, you were given your instructions both in Spanish and English in the dressing room. Please obey my commands, respect the bell, and protect yourself at all times. Edison, entiende todo? Todo bien? Touch gloves. There's a new expression in the South called crunk. From uh, southern hip-hop music, it means hot. This fighter, fight, figures to be crunk. Esquina, esquina, Miranda. Kelly, get in your corner, guys. Get in your corner. Just to be clear, neither fighter is from Kronk, but Larry thinks the fight will be Kronk. Lennox, there's a significant body contrast between the longer, looser muscles of Pavlik and the much more tightly bunched Miranda. If you were brand new to the sport, you'd look at this and say, oh my gosh, Miranda's going to overpower him. Doesn't always work that way, does it? Doesn't always work that way. Guys with longer arms usually have those long, fast, 
twitching muscles, which really helps their case. Now uh, the man is boxing. They're punching, Lennox. Uh, yes. And Pavlik promised to back up his opponent because he thinks that Miranda doesn't fight as well going back. Well, he succeeded in doing that part of the time in the first minute. Both but of guys have landed danger. a couple. Yeah, both guys have landed a couple significant shots. Both guys are in harm's way. Step back. Very good hands up. But it's a very, very fast pace. Sure is. Nobody's trying to establish a jab, Lennox. Nobody's trying to establish a jab. They're just going straight for the raw power. I think Pavlik is throwing more jabs than Miranda. And this is what he said that he was going to do in the fighters' meeting, that he's going to put Miranda under some serious pressure because he can't fight going backwards. And right now, Miranda's not really throwing any punches that really shows that he can fight going backwards. No, it looks like Miranda is a bit thrown off by Pavlik coming at him with as much aggression as he's shown. I think Miranda expected to be able to intimidate Kelly Pavlik, and right now, Pavlik is showing no fear whatsoever as he lands long right hands into the grill of Miranda oh. and bangs him hard with a shot. And Miranda tries to come back with his own right hand. If, if Miranda has an edge, he can take a shot. And Miranda needs to step away from that right hand that Pavlik is throwing at him and st stay away from the corners and the ropes because he has nowhere to go right now especially when he gets hit and he's being caught a couple of times with that straight right hand which Miranda. Pavlik is definitely getting through with it and Pavlik landed a left hook he says Miranda's very susceptible to left hook and right now Edison is in trouble in the corner as he's been tagged four times big by Pavlik with still a minute to go in the round Kelly Pavlik not backing off thinks he has Miranda going and wants to get him right now Miranda needs to keep that left hand up. He's got it very low. He's not even oh, trying to stop that right hand. So I don't think he knows how to okay, stop that right hand up, right now. Up. But that left hand of Miranda needs to stay a little so bit one, higher. One of the things that's happening is Miranda's really punches seem awfully soft and not without any snap in it the way he's, the way he's on the defensive. So even though some of his punches are getting through, I don't see any power in them yet. Well, like I say, I think it's very clear. Miranda expected to be the intimidator. Pavlik isn't intimidated at all. They are trading bombs at short range. And now Miranda starts to assert himself a little more. And lands a left hook and a big right cross. And what a round. That might have been the round of the year on HBO. And Pavlik went to the wrong corner. They laughed about it. Right, bucket, come come on. On. Give me the freaking bucket! Any bucket! All right, just relax, just relax. Listen, you gotta just quit walking them, though, pal. You gotta move them shoulders walking at them. You're just becoming a stiff target. Close up, bring up the upper and finish off with the hook. Drink, drink some water. Finish up with the hook. Hands up defensively. Come on. Come on, get off the ropes. Get off the ropes. In the center of the ring now. Understand? And here we see Pavlik landing a straight right hand right on the button. And this is what he needs to do in the fight. Throw straight punches. I don't know that Miranda has ever walked in to that kind of consistent explosion before and he seemed a little bit confused when he back went to his corner because he wasn't able to do what he wants to do against this fighter copy box numbers in round one were spectacular Pavlik 38 out of 97 29 out of 79 power shots Miranda 25 out of 94 19 out of 66 power shots Pavlik got off at a much higher percentage landing 39 percent there's a big bomb by Miranda with the right hand Maybe he's got his sea legs under him now. Both guys are still gunning away. Pavlik uses his offense in part as defense. He will throw 90 to what now? 100 punches. That could have been counted as a knockdown. He was sitting on the ropes. Miranda was sitting on the ropes. The ropes held him up. And incidentally, Steve Smoger, this referee, has a reputation for very slow stoppage. So if you want to see the bombs keep flying in a fight, he's the man to have as the third man in the ring. Both guys are going to get their chances with Smoger in there. And Miranda looks a bit rattled right now. You know, he's a bit... Why, he's, why wouldn't he be? He needs, he needs to definitely get out of the corner. 
I think he's had some, some trouble making weight, so he looks a bit spent right now. He looks he, to me like he's bothered by the length of Pavlik, Lennox. Not only that, but he's, he's punching good out of the corner right now. He's catching Pavlik with some good right hands. But after he throws his combination, he's dropping his left hand, leaving Pavlik able to throw that right hand over that left hand. Well, this is old-fashioned middleweight punching. Beautiful, beautiful. Who is this day and age? This kind of punching wouldn't look bad in the heavyweight division. These guys are really firing. And now Miranda lands an uppercut and seizes the initiative. Now we have to see whether Pavlik can take the punishment that Miranda has. Pavlik's got some blood running out of his nose, so he definitely got hit in the nose. But Miranda needs to keep his hands up, especially that left hand. After he's throwing the combination, he's putting his hands down. Both guys get credit for world-class chins so far. I mean, nobody's been down, and some major league bombs have landed. Told a lot of people this week not to be surprised to see a fight in which both men would be on the canvas. Pavlik landed the, the stiffer, harder, straighter punches, and I think they've affected Miranda to a certain degree. But you can never underestimate the will of Edison Miranda. Who overcomes his absence of craft with an abundance of desire. They keep fighting past the second round bell. And they get a well-deserved standing ovation for what they've given to the fans in the first two rounds. What's that? He's tired? Yeah. Okay. Breathe through your mouth, okay? Wait, wait, wait. Go ahead. Breathe through your mouth, Kelly. Pull the, pull the cam. The guy's dead. The guy's dead. The guy's dead. Come on, keep your hands up. And turn him. And turn him. After the right, throw the hook. Finish off with the combinations. Finish with the hook. And close it up. Move to the sides. Come on, close your eyes. And here's Pavic hurting in Miranda on the ropes. Is this a knockdown? No. He did sit on the rope, but the referee didn't warn him about it. What if this fight had happened and, and here's two weeks a ago? Big overhand right by Miranda catching Pavic right on the chin. Imagine if this had happened two weeks ago with Delaware and Mayweather. Well, the cynic would say there's already been more fight here in two rounds than there was in 12 rounds two weeks ago in the fight the world waited for but everybody at ringside knew everybody who covers the sport knew that two guys were coming in here gunning for the spectacular knockout and the fight has realized all of its expectations already you know no matter what happens from here on out both fighters are earning shots at a championship don't punch, don't punch. Step, 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 question step, step. to me is which one will be able to put a style imprint on the fight and transform it from a slugfest into something he can manage Lennox well I think we're seeing a little bit of that from Pavlik now in the center of the ring Pavlik is definitely the more technically sound fighter right oh, now he's, a doing hard right. Right he's doing the right things he's throwing some good combinations ending off with a hook he's a bit flat footed should be using the job a bit more but right now, they're, they're happy slugging it out. Miranda with a left hook. Ablick with another right hand. Miranda's going to the body a little bit more. Blood flowing from the nostril of Kelly Pavlik. Miranda with a looping uppercut. Just misses with a big right hand. Pavlik lands a jab. A rarity in these first three rounds. Body shot for Kelly Pavlik. Combination upstairs. Miranda sticks him with the left hand. Pavlik alternately stepping back to use his link and then stepping in to take away Miranda's punching power. I think he's been very effective with his feet so far, Lennox. He said he would back Miranda up. He's been able to do it most of the time. Now he's looking a bit weary, and what he's doing, when he's backing Miranda up, he's standing in one position, basically waiting to get punched back. Now Smoker's going to warn Miranda for low blows. That was the third time that Edison Miranda touched Kelly Pavlik below the belt line. And he 
he was uh, penalized several points in his fight with the German Arthur Abraham for low blows. He was penalized three points for low blows and two points for butting in the fight that he lost to Abraham in Germany. That's the only loss on the records of either of the two fighters. That was a fight in which Miranda landed functionally twice as many punches as Abraham, but wound up losing. Havlick once again backing Miranda up against the ropes. Going to work with the right hand. Miranda seems to be tiring now. Miranda's being very sloppy with his defense and offense right now. And I think the fact that he had to make that weight really affected him. I think Pavlik's affecting him. I think everything's affecting him. And I think one question is, did he focus too much in the build-up to the fight on his verbal war with Jermaine Taylor? Miranda spent more time at the news conference three days ago talking about Taylor and how Taylor ought to be fighting him and how he was going to clean the canvas with Jermaine Taylor than he did talking about Kelly Pavlik. And Pavlik, in his own calm, quiet way, seems quite aware of that and has used that for motivation. Later tonight, you'll see Jermaine Taylor against Corey Spinks in what will certainly be a different-looking fight from this, if Corey has anything to say about it. And let's, let's look at the low blow by Miranda. And Pavlik pulled his head down a little bit, but it was obviously low and crushing. I think sometimes when he's fatigued or frustrated, he does that. Copybox numbers through three show Kelly Pavlik averaging 30 power punches landed per round. He has thrown more and landed more than Miranda in each of the three rounds. Harold, how do you have it so far? <laughs> okay, Jim. Three to nothing, 30 to 27, Kelly Pavlik. Jim, I'll tell you something. What impresses me about this fight is leverage. Kelly Pavlik backs this guy into the ropes, and he's got real good leverage coming forward with that right hand. I mean, he's bombing Edison Miranda with right hands. Miranda always rallies in the last minute of the round, but so far, three to nothing, Pavlik. Well, I'll tell you, Miranda has taken some really stiff shots from a fighter with a reputation as a good puncher. Miranda's right eye seems to be swelling and closing just a bit. Pavlik's right eye is a little bit the worse for wear as well. You've seen blood from the nose of Kelly Pavlik already. It's an extremely physical fight in every way, shape, and form. Miranda's throwing some ineffective punches, more slapping. Pavlik is throwing good combinations. Like I said, he has better technical skill than Miranda. Miranda needs that experience in that technical uh, field. Needs to go back to the gym and work on a couple of things. Especially uh, keeping the left hand up. That's not going to do him any good tonight, Lennox. But one of the interesting things is you pointed out about how he throws more round punches. And so Pavlik has been able to avoid them by keeping his arms up and making them go around him. And the reason he does that, that's, that shows good amateur background where, you know, keeping the hands up and, and throwing the straighter punches. Miranda has no snap on his punches right now. Just throwing short stuff to try to get Pavlik off of it. And still Pavlik is able to back Miranda up and land bigger shots. Hands down by Miranda still. Needs to keep him a lot higher. There were a lot of people who seemed to have the notion that if Edison Miranda could land flush, there wasn't anybody in the division who could take that punch. So far, Kelly Pavlik has stared that notion down. He's taken a lot of flush shots from Edison Miranda, and his punches do more damage. Again, the myth of the super muscular body, as opposed to the longer, looser muscles. Miranda looks tired, Pavlik looks tired, but not as tired. This is the fourth round of the schedule, 12. But at this pace, who really thinks it might go 12? Stranger things have happened, I guess. Still no real boxing. The fourth round was another slugfest. Fight continues pretty much the same way. This summer, catch the latest installments from our award-winning documentary series, Sports of the 20th Century, Wednesday, June 6th. It's the premiere of Barbaro, 
A one-hour special on the Thoroughbred's tragic pursuit of the Triple Crown and the fight for life that captured our hearts. One month later, on July 11, we bring you The Ghosts of Flatbush, a two-hour documentary chronicling the glory days of the Brooklyn Dodgers and the heartbreak they caused Brooklynites everywhere, like Larry Merchant, when they left for Los Angeles. Come on, get in the middle of the ring. You understand? Breathe deeply. Okay, Miranda said that by the fourth round, Pavlik would be down to about five foot ten inches. And the way this fight's going, Pavlik's up to about six four. Yeah, and the statistics from CompuBox got more one-sided in the fourth round, where Pavlik landed 39 of 82 power shots to only 11 of 56 for Miranda. Miranda landing only 13 out of 91 punches in the fourth round. That's only 14 percent. Pavlik is landing at a very high connect stay percentage. Up, stay up, stay up. Now, Miranda lands a body shot and a left hook upstairs. Still no penalty. Second warning from Smoker to Miranda for low blows. I think you have to assume that the next time Miranda has an obvious low blow, he's going to get that one-point penalty. But what does that matter? Harold Letterman, I think, has Kelly Pavlik winning every round so far, and I'm pretty sure the official judges would see it the same way. Well, Miranda might have won the second round in some cards. But a point taken is a, can be very important in any fight. Miranda's waving Pavlik in as if to say, keep throwing, I want to trade with you. No, I think what he's saying, he's touch, touching his heart to say, I've got a heart, I can take your best shots. The question is, how long are his eyes going to stay open? To me, they look like they're closing pretty fast. In this kind of situation, Pavlik should stick more to his, his boxing, his technical skills, going in there uh, right behind a job, throwing a combination. Yeah, but what, but what got him here was was moving moving Miranda backwards. I like, know, but he's attacking. Should, yeah, but he needs to take advantage of the fact that he's got long arms <laughs> and that he's a boxer. He shouldn't be able to, he shouldn't slug it out with a slugger because he's at a disadvantage there. Well, it hasn't been a disadvantage so far. Yeah, but I think what Lennox is saying is, and maybe I'm, I'm misinterpreting you, Lennox. Are you saying, why take a chance when you're yeah. ahead on the fight? Right. I mean, he's in with a bigger, a big puncher. And, uh, you know, there might be a situation where he may come back and drop his hand. And Miranda come across with a great right hand and catch him flush. Right. He's built a working margin here. You don't want to give it up on one big punch. But on the other hand... He keeps maintaining the chance that he's going to land the one big punch. Right, but there's always that chance. It only takes one punch to divert history. This is a fight that doesn't need a lot of captions. The pictures tell the story. Now Miranda starts to build confidence with his right hand again. But those punches aren't landing clean that I that I can see. One of them did. And that one did. And too. that one did too. Yep. yep. He landed three right hands in that sequence. Slightly better for Edison Miranda in the fifth. Still Kelly Pavlik's fight. And you wonder what Corey Spinks thinks if he's watching from his dressing room. A pure boxer like Spinks warming up there with trainer Kevin Cunningham. Cunningham, a former St. Louis cop, holding the hand pads and working with the fast-fisted Corey Spinks. While the entire dressing room claps in approval. A boxer like Spinks would probably look at what Miranda and Pavlik are doing and say, those guys are crazy. The jab, the jab, the jab, come on. Double up on the hook. Lennox Edison Miranda has continually been blowing out of his nose in the ring. Does that increase his swelling? It does. Um, most trainers tell you at that position, don't blow because what it does, it makes the, the swelling a lot more. Blows it right up. He didn't have that long amateur career. 
which fighters like you gain experience from. Is that perhaps one of the reasons that he's making that kind of error? Yes, it is. Copy box numbers in the fifth. Miranda 19 out of 79. Pavlik 35 out of 76. The 76 punches. Pavlik's low output for the fight. Only a 25-18 edge in power, so at least the copy box numbers narrowed somewhat in the fifth round. And you got a, a glimmer of that, as I suggested at the end of the round, that things had started to go a little bit better for Miranda in the last minute. I'm just Miranda saying that Mar Miranda's uh, gotten a little bit accustomed to what he's seeing because he's staying off the rope, staying in the middle of the ring where he doesn't give away Stay up, Cal. Stay precious up. time and the appearance of getting hit a lot more. The appearance and the reality. Well, this, this has the appearance now of becoming a war of attrition. War of wills. Who, and will. Who's going to be able to stand this longer? Who's not going to buckle? Lennox, is there anything you can do in sparring to prepare for the physical damage that goes with fighting like this? The thing you do is you put yourself against all types of different sparring partners to prepare for that. What Emmanuel Stewart usually does, keeps me in the ring, brings in three sparring partners and gives them each a minute at me and I don't get no rest. So these guys are all, all different styles are always coming at me. Big right hand. Oh, that hurt him. He's out. Miranda is down and the question is, can he make it up? Yes. I don't think he's going to make it. Well, he's on his feet. He's definitely wobbly. Is he going to let him go on? Yeah, Smoker will let him go on. Absolutely. I've seen Smoker away. He's giving him too much time. What's going on here? Spat the mouth. Smoker is... Now he's going to get a chance to put the mouth. What is Steve Smoker doing? He's blowing this fight for Pavlik. This is incompetence. I can't stand it when a referee does this. When a fighter is has given himself the advantage. Well, to be fair, you know, he dropped his mouth guard, so the referee well, has to put back his mouth guard. I think guard. it's gone anyway. He just got hit with a massive left hook. And Lennox Six. Lewis is correct. He's going to have a Four tremendous goal. amount of difficulty Cinco. recovering from this. Six. He's going to make it up again. And I'm betting Smoker lets him keep going. Huh? Look, Four right again. Two knockdowns in the round for Pavlik. Miranda's legs don't steam there. It seems like they're there. And the bell saves him from the carnage of that round. And Miranda is all but out on his feet as he slumps into the chair. We're halfway through the fight. How are you feeling? You want to stop the fight? We're on the seventh. You want me to stop it? No, no. I think Smoger is taking a point away from Miranda. In addition to the two knockdowns, if he is doing that, that's a 10-6 round. You got one minute. If you give me one minute, I don't see anything. I'm going to stop it. And here's the first knockdown. Straight right hand. Miranda didn't even see that coming through. That came starting with a jab and then ending off with a right. And that's from an accumulation of punches. Topped by another accumulation of punches. And here's the second knockdown. Pavlik coming across with a great right hand. He's very accurate with that right hand. So Edison Miranda still wobbling now as the seventh round begins. Harold Letterman's scorecard is probably going to be a moot point. Harold, quickly, what does it show? Look at Jim, 5 to 1, 59 52, Kelly Pavlik. I thought Smoger should have definitely stopped it. I mean, this guy was really hurt, and that's how people get hurt. Well, it seems like Pavlik only has to hit Miranda with a great shot right now to stop this fight. And I know the referee's standing close, watching out for Miranda because Miranda looks very shaky on his legs. Jose Bonilla told Edison Miranda, if you don't show me something in the first minute, I'm going to stop the fight. And he is up on the steps in Miranda's corner. You can see him behind Edison right there, yelling at Edison that he's about to stop the fight unless Miranda can somehow fight back. Now, we showed you in the feature piece that Bonilla is both a father figure and a trainer for Edison Miranda. It must be very difficult now for him to watch his fighter wobble around the ring, his right eye closing, and this is stoppage time. Any other referee would have stopped it before there. Smoker finally does. Kelly Pavlik has a huge knockout victory. And now we have a build-up to a fight with...
Taylor. That could be huge, huge, huge. Assuming Taylor takes care of his half of this fight. Well, Larry, there was an argument in effect, a disagreement between Lou DiBella's promoter, Jermaine Taylor, and Kelly Pavlik's promoter, Bob Arum, as to whether Pavlik was really made a credible offer to fight Taylor tonight. It doesn't matter now, does it? Well, he'll be made a credible offer the next time. <laughs> and let me tell you, Pelvic did a great job in preparing for this fight because he told us that, you know, he's going to back Miranda up because Miranda can't fight going backwards. And we've seen evidence of that in this fight. This is what allowed him to win the fight. Looking at a fight, analyzing what he needs to do and going out and doing it. And that was a great show of courage by Pavlik, who came in here ready to fight fire with fire, who knew that Miranda was going to be gunning for the knockout with the big right hand, and simply took the fight to him from the very beginning. From the get-go. Pavlik closed the show in the seventh round, landing 12 of 18 power shots. Hey, man, it works. That body. Bloody nose, took some very big shots, was never really out of control. Let's take a look at the end, Lennox. You know, it only, it only took one good shot because Miranda was definitely loosening his, his legs, has no legs under him, and he was looking for a way out. Just accumulation of punches. Referee stepped in, stopped the fight. Well, like I said, Steve Smoker gives you your money's worth. He's not going to stop it until the issue is absolutely, totally decided. And finally, it was all right there for him. Let's go to ring announcer Michael Buffer for the official particulars on the knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, the referee steps in and calls a halt to the bout. One minute, 54 seconds of round number seven. The winner by TKO victory. And now the WBC and universally ranked number one middleweight contender in the world, Kelly. The Ghost Pavlik! Stunning performance by Pavlik. Eye-catching in every way. Landed twice as many punches as Miranda. Threw 35 more. Landed at a twice as high connect percentage even more dominant when you look at the power punch category landing 103 more power punches throwing 73 more landing almost 50 percent and these were big shots long-armed loose muscled rangy quick kelly pavlik at 6-2 is a physical force in the middleweight division larry merchant stands by with the gunslinger from youngstown ohio